Hello, everybody. Um, so this video, we're going we're gonna, to uh, introduce a new idea, um, uh, something called functions of several variables. And, and we're really only going to look at two functions of two variables in this video, but we'll see uh, in, in the next one or the one after that we can extend that into more than two. So we'll start with two. It's an easy, easiest one to visualize. Uh, and then a lot of the ideas from that can carry forth into the more complicated versions. So let's just start with a definition of functions of several variables or of two variables, and then um, uh, and then we'll start picking apart what they what they are and how we how we work with them. So a function f of two variables is is a rule that assigns. to each uh, ordered pair that we'll call uh, x, y. Um, so these are real numbers in, in the ones that we're going to be working with. So to uh, function, of, function f of two variables is a rule that assigns to each ordered pair x, y in a set d a unique number denoted uh, f of xy. Okay, um, we call d. Uh, d is the domain, and the range. Well, that's going to be the set of all these numbers that are assigned for each pair in the domain. That's what this symbol just means. So the range is uh, all the numbers f of x, y, such that x, y is in the domain, okay? So one, one way we can picture this, right? So maybe off to the side, we'll remember what we do with, with uh, our, our old functions of one variable. We take, we take a, an element in our domain x, and we assign it a number we call f of x, right? And the picture we might draw sometimes is we've got a domain and we send it out to the range, right? And in this case, the domain is one real number. So it's a number on the number line and we send it to a different number on the number line, right? So now what we're picturing, so it's starting to look like a face over there, is that we've got a point Maybe, maybe my domain is some, some region in the xy plane, right? And if we pick a point in that region, we assign it a number, um, a, a single real number. So you're inputting two numbers, outputting a number, a single number, right? So we're, this is still just the regular old definition of function. It takes one input and one output. It's just our, our input now is an ordered pair instead of a single number. It's kind of, uh, in, in some ways, reversing some of the ideas we have with vector functions where you input a single number and output these three component functions or parametric equations where you input a single number and output a, a coordinate pair. We're going the other direction now. Right. We will sometimes use the same way we sometimes write in one dimension uh, with, a, with a, a function of a single variable, we'll write y, we'll name the output y, we'll often call this output number z. So z is equal to f of x, y. Okay. So let's, let's think about the kinds of reasons we might use this. So uh, we might have... Um, I mean, this is, this is one we've actually all seen before. Um, we just didn't know what we were looking at. If, if you had an input, right, you could input something like the latitude and longitude, so a location on Earth that would come as a coordinate pair, and you could output the current temperature. Right, so that would be when we look at weather maps, right? When the when you watch the news and they've got a map of the United States, and over each point, or not every point, but they select some points and they they put a number there. That is per each location, latitude and longitude, longitude, latitude and longitude. What is the current temperature, right? Or maybe if you're doing some kind of statistical analysis on life expectancy uh, in uh, uh, 
years left or something like that, expected years left. Well, if you input somebody's age, and let's say we're doing it in this country, so you could input a zip code, you might get out a number like expected years left, right? We know that for each given your age, and then also there's, there's always some kind of statistics around where you live and what that means for your life expectancy. So um, these are just a couple of examples we can come up with for the kinds of things we would see. Let's do some examples with some uh, algebraic expressions of our function, so we start seeing how we work with them. Let's look at the function f of xy is equal to x plus y over xy, right? So first of all, when we compute with these things, we compute just like we do anything else, right? So like we do with our, our functions of one variable. If I tell you that f of x is equal to x plus seven and I ask you to compute f of two, you simply replace x with two and compute. So now I need to tell you both of these values, right? So maybe, maybe f of two, four, I'm putting in two for x, and four for y, and I get six eighths or three fourths, right? So there's not a whole lot of new information in terms of how we work with them in terms of uh, evaluating them. Let's consider um, domains. So as we do with functions of a single variable, we will take, uh, we'll take the convention that if we do not write the domain, what the implied domain is every value of the variable for which the mathematical expression exists. In this case, it's every value of the two variables, right? So let's look at this function, f of x, y equals x plus y. If I look at the numerator, there aren't any numbers with any restrictions around adding them together, so the numerator doesn't have any problems. We can certainly multiply numbers together. Um, with no problem, except we're in the denominator, we need to make sure that our denominator is not equal to zero, which means x is not zero and y is not zero. They both have to be non-zero. So in terms of our domain, what that means is the domain um, is, there's a couple of ways I could write this. Um, uh, let's say it this way, it's all the points x, y such that x is not equal to zero and y is not equal to zero. If we think about it geometrically, it's the x, y plane, plane of real numbers, uh, minus, so I'm using that little slash to mean except for the x and y axes, okay? So besides the axis, right? Along the x and y axis, if we were looking at a picture of this, right? if I wanted to sketch this domain, I can pick any point in any of the four quadrants, right? but I can't pick any point along the two axes because at those, at the, anywhere on those lines, one of the variables is zero, zero which would make, uh, would make the denominator zero, which we can't have. Okay. Um, and and, and like, like our functions of a single variable, sometimes we'll have occasion to limit our domain for other reasons besides the math, right? In those examples I gave, for instance, um, it wouldn't make sense to have a negative age or our zip codes are gonna be whatever, whatever the set of zip codes are, right? The domain here is gonna, is gonna conform to what this is, right? Or if, if this was measuring, uh, you know, all, all the different things we could measure if there's some reason to not exclude, include some values, that's, that, that has to be given. Otherwise, we assume it's the, uh, the sort of maximal mathematical domain, all the values that we can, uh, can work with. All right, let's look at one more, oops, and then uh, talk about visualizing these things a little more, all right? Because all I've done so far is draw a picture of the domain. Of course, we're gonna get to graphing, but let's hold off on that for one moment. Uh, let's look at one more function. f of x, y is equal to x plus y over the square root of x minus y plus 1. Okay. So again, let's, let's evaluate this at a point just to see this one more time. 
uh, f of 5, 2, I get 5 plus 2 over 5 minus 2 plus 1. So I'm getting 7 over the square root of 4 or 7 halves. Okay, so nothing too tricky there. Let's think about the domain here, right? Again, there's nothing in the numerator, it's the same numerator as before, that can cause us any problems, right? So we don't have to worry about the numerator. However, in the denominator, we have a couple things going on. We can't have the denominator be zero, and we need the square root, the, the argument of the square root to be positive, which all comes together to say, that argument has to be greater than zero. In other words, we could say y has to be less than x plus one, All right? I'm just adding y to the other side and I wrote it, wrote it the other way. So let's picture this domain. Again, this is just a picture of the domain, right? Like if we were visualizing domains of single variable functions, right? If I had a function like f of x equals, um, uh, let's say, the square root of uh, one minus x squared, I could visualize this domain with a number line, right? And I would need just the numbers between negative one and one, right? So I could visualize it that way, or maybe I would draw that those open circles with the line, an open circle to visualize all the numbers between negative one and one are the only ones that work for that function. We're doing the same thing here. Our domain is just uh, a two-dimensional space or it it's lives in a two-dimensional space. So I'm gonna select some points within this domain. So let's, let's first graph the line where y is equal to x plus one. Right, that looks about like that. And so on this point, the x, x is equal, sorry, y is equal to x plus one. If I make y any bigger than this line, it will be greater than x plus one. So the only points that must work are all the points below this line, right? So our domain is like a section of um, the x, y plane. That's the only place our function can exist. Um, that's the only points our function can evaluate without running into trouble. Okay, let's now take a look at what we mean by graphing. Okay. So we'll use some lessons from single variable functions, right? So if I have a function like y equals f of x, the way we graph Right, I have an x-axis and a z-axis. Well, I look for my x value, and then I move up, oops, not z, this is y, move up to the corresponding point, right? So this is a point like x, f of x, right? So I, I put my domain on the bottom, and then vertically I have my, my range, and if I, do this several times, right? I can plot a bunch of points and start to get an idea of what my function might look like, okay? We will do something similar with these functions. When we have z as a function of x, y, let's draw our coordinate system. So now, Remember up above, our, our domain was this horizontal line. Now our domain is this x, y plane. So it's this, the flat plane between the x and y uh, axes. I'm just looking at the positive part right now to make the drawing simpler. And then the vertical axis will represent our output, right? Our input and our output. So if we have a domain, so let me draw some arbitrary domain. If I pick a point in this domain, right? So remember up here, for instance, this would be the point x zero. This will be the point x y zero, right? And then I move up above until I get to the corresponding value of my function. So that this point here is x y f 
of x, y, right? Or x, y, z, if we've called that z, okay? Right, now again, I said above, just like up here, I did it above. Of course, we know we can have negative values. This could work out to be negative, it can go below. But we could play this game with all the points in the domain and get a collection of points up here. And when we get enough of them, we might start to discover what our, whoops, I drew it so it's not above the domain. Let's, let's make this a little nicer. So it should only be above the domain. All right, so I'll try to get the same shape up here, but it's probably got some bump and it does different things, right? So it's hard to draw these, but you get the idea, you get, you get some surface floating above um, the domain. So I, I've, I've always visualized this. I think this is, this, is, this is visualizable. If you imagine a map of the United States, right? And instead of the weather report showing you uh, putting numbers above, so I'm gonna do a really quick sketch. This is a pretty bad sketch of the United States. I'm trying to do it at an angle. And if we had the temperature in each spot, we could create, if we went up to the temperature above each spot, we'd have kind of a, a mirror image of the United States, but you'd have places with high temperatures and low temperatures and high temperatures, a, a, a stretched version of that where above each point, you have the temperature, right? If it's a little colder here, this might be a little dip in that thing, right? So of course this is difficult to draw. So I'm, I'm, I'm trying my best, try to, try to visualize what I'm talking about here, okay? So let's, let's define what I mean by this graph and then we'll get something better than me to draw it. So let's say it more explicitly. We will say if, <coughs> excuse me, if f, is a function uh, of two variables with domain D. The graph of F is the set of all points x, y, z in our three-dimensional space such that z equals f of x, y and x, y is in the domain, right? Or we could write it's the set of all points x, y, z such that z equals f of x, y, and x, y is in the domain. Okay, so that's our definition, right? So it just means, again, what I tried to draw here. You pick every point in the domain, uh, it, you know, at, in the domain is in, this, in the flat, just like we're picking a point along the horizontal axis here, we pick a point in the x, y plane here, and then we move up or down to the corresponding z value, or f of x, y value, okay? All right, let's take a look at some graphs. Let's look at the two functions. Uh, well, actually, let's, let's do, let me write one more function down before we go look at them. We've already actually seen some surfaces uh, a little bit, and we've worked a, a bit with planes, right? We have, for instance, this is an equation of a plane. Okay. Well, I can rearrange this equation to get z equals 2x plus y plus 2, and then I'm thinking of it, it's the same set of points. I'm thinking of it now, though, as a function, uh, z is a function of x and y, right? It's the same, same as saying x plus y equals 1. I can think of this as the line y equals negative x plus 1, right? Here I'm just thinking of an equation and all the sets of points that satisfy it. Here I'm thinking of y as a function of x, like that's kind of our, our convention. So these planes are exactly, uh, fall into this definition of functions of several variables if we think of them this way, right? Their domains are all the real numbers, and so you can pick every point in the xy plane and find a point that corresponds to it, and eventually you build them all together, you put them all together, you get something like a plane, or you get a plane. So let's take a, a look at a few of these now. Let me share this. Uh, 
this. So what we're looking at here is the plane I was just talking about. This is our function. Uh, this was z equals 2x plus uh, y plus 2. Right. And so for any particular value, so for instance, at, at 1, 1, if I put in x equals 1 and y equals 1, we get 2 plus 1 is 3 plus 2 is 5. And that point is, so the red axis is the x, the, the uh, here, let's do this. Here's how we can do this nicely. I just had an idea. Let me put in uh, see if all right. Well, there's the point one one zero. I was hoping I could quickly have it do the line, but I don't quite know how to do that. And if we raise that point up, if we go above that point, if we go straight up above that point, we get the point one one five right so if i'm looking down they're right above each other and you can see one of them lives in that plane and one is in the domain and that blue one is is the value of the function and a is the input of that function okay let's look at those more interesting functions that we had before here is z equals x plus y over xy Right, and you can see that we're getting some fairly interesting shapes now. Remember what we said about this, that it doesn't, it cannot exist on either of the axes. And you can see when I look from above, our, our, our computer system starts having problems evaluating there. So sometimes you see these little mistakes where it doesn't really know what to do because it's getting some strange numbers. But we can get the sense here that it doesn't evaluate this function along the axes. And in fact, you can kind of start to see that as we get close to those axes, our functions values start getting incredibly big, right? So we're imagining putting in numbers like, um, so for instance, if you had x equals one and y equals 0.1, you'd have 1.1 divided by one times 0.1, which is 11. And if you go to y equals 0 0.01, all of a sudden you get up to 110. As you get closer to those axes, in this case, our function values are getting incredibly high, right? We're gonna talk in another video about how we can start to piece together that information. So I'm not gonna do too much detail. I just want us to start seeing some of what these functions can look like, right? So this is a pretty interesting surface. And then let's do that last one we had, which was, um, Oh, I thought I had it in here. I must not have er I must have erased it. So we'll just look at something else uh, just to get an idea of how some of these actually I can put it in pretty quick. That was x plus y. I'll just change this function to be the square root of x minus y plus one. Let's see how it looks. So here's our new. Here's our new function, right? It's got this kind of twisted shape. Remember, this was the function. So I'm gonna put in the, a graph of the plane that lies along the line y equals x plus one. Remember, that was our domain. That was the dividing line for our domain. And you can see, whoops, for some reason everything just disappeared. There it is, I must have somehow moved very far. So you can see when I look from above, it doesn't, why does it keep doing that? There's some control I'm not aware of that lets me jump and zoom way out or something. In any event, we've got uh, this, this blue represents our function. Now our function, when I drew the domain, was supposed to go right up to that line. This is just a fact of how the, the, the computer's rendering it. It hasn't rendered, it's only rendering up to a certain height Right, it cuts off the function. If I keep zooming out, oops, that's zooming in. If I keep zooming out, so I'm moving higher and higher, it's drawing more of the function and we see that in fact it is getting closer and closer to that line. That line really is the dividing line of our function. Our function only exists 
below that line, right? And we can see again on one side, as it gets close to that line, it starts to get incredibly large. And in the other direction, it gets incredibly large in the negative direction, right? So that's, that's what's going on there. Let's zoom out just a little bit more. Okay, so we will play a lot more with these. They're pretty interesting. But again, each one of these points, if you look at the xy plane, there's the xy plane in here, you, you can find the corresponding point on the xy plane and then move down to the value, the value at that point given by the function above. Okay, let's stop there. We'll dig into more detail in the next video. Uh, thanks, everybody. I'll see you next time.